All right, good morning. Welcome to a new video series all about getting started with the Salesforce CLI. This is part one. Okay, so let's start with the, the absolute basics. What is CLI short for? Command line interface. Don't worry, it's not gonna be this simple. I just thought I'd spell that out in case anyone was thinking. Okay, next we have some useful links. Let me just drop out of the presentation and slide into those. So, down, uh, let's look at the download one. Here we so go. So now I will officially start. Ooh. Do not fear the command line. Oh, let's just stop that one. Okay, so here's the download link. I'm on a Mac. Also supported on a Windows, so don't worry. You know, if I get time, you know, we might do a similar series for the Windows machine or updates. I don't know, no promises. And if you're out there and you're using a Linux, you're clearly very technical and you probably know what the command line is anyway, but there's a version for you. All right, that's where you get the download and install from. Documentation comes off of here. Yeah, Salesforce DX setup guide continuous integration, all that kind of stuff. Some of it very technical. Of course, one good place to start is DX. Sorry, not DX, Trailhead. Start with the basics, guided learning. All that's really cool. And then this one, which just started playing a couple of minutes ago, do not fear the command line. And Peter's an amazing guy. He's done this at London's Calling, Dreamforce, and most recently also at the user group. All right, but this, this is the best version of his presentation and it's a precursor to some of this. He goes into some of the command line basics that are not related to Salesforce, which are useful. Okay, I recommend you watch it. So that's the links, they're in the slide deck. So let's have a look at where we're gonna go first. All right, there's a lot of commands and you're probably thinking I can't remember all of them. Okay, through this series, we're gonna go through sets of these commands so that you can get a grasp on the basics and then we can look at another area. So we're just gonna start with the basics today. So how do you bring up a command list for the CLI? Um, that's what it will look like. I'll show you how to run that in two seconds. Then we're gonna look at authenticating to an org, but not a scratch org. So any of the scratch commands for this part and for the next few parts, we're just gonna ignore them. We're gonna work with sandboxes and dev orgs, okay? But you can connect CLI to any environment, okay? It's really easy. We'll go through that in a sec. Then we're gonna look at what you can do once you've connected your org. So you can open your org very quickly. So if you've got lots of orgs, you could connect them all up and then you're a few commands away from just opening it up. In some ways it's quicker than password manager, which you'll see in a sec. Um, obviously as you connect up all your different orgs, if you get really excited by this, then you'll need a way to alias them so that you can open them, open them up quicker. All right, so that's what we're gonna look at today. So let's go to terminal. Let me just make this a bit bigger. Let's go clear. There you go. As, as I mentioned, Peter Cheatham's Do Not Fear the Command Line gives you a very good orientation on some of the basic commands, which I'm not gonna explain in too much detail. But what we are here to do is look at the CLI. So everything in the CLI starts with SFDX, okay? And then typically, you type force, okay? So let's just have a look at what's available under SFDX space force, okay? These are all the high level groups of commands for the CLI, all right? Now, the first thing we wanna do is, I can't remember, I wanna see all of the commands because I'm a bit nosy and I can't remember them. So I'm just gonna hit my up arrow. I'm just gonna remove that and I'm gonna put colon doc. And then I think I can put minus H. You'll see a pattern here. If you don't know what a command does and how to use it, minus H will probably tell you. So we wanna see a command list. So let's do a commands list. All right, here's the commands list. Okay, there's lots of commands and through the series, we're gonna go through as many of these as we can. All right, so let's just have a look at a couple of other quick things before we connect up and all. Let's just see where I am. I'm actually in a 
demo environment on my machine. So it doesn't have all of my normal setup, but I have created a folder. Let's just go there. And in there, there's nothing. But okay, why have I gone into that folder? Just purely for organization. Now I've just run a command that shows you all of the CLI commands and it's scrolled off my screen. It's very difficult to, to read. So what I wanna do is just send that to a text file. I can do that. And again, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Peter Cheaton's video covers this. So I'm just gonna do a greater than sign. All right, and I'm just gonna say dx uh, commands.txt, all right? So now if I do ls, I can see that's there. Now, I haven't mentioned VS Code, but I have got VS Code here and I'm purely just gonna use this so that we can just open this up, okay? And have a look at the text file. Further in, next few parts, I will start to mention VS Code and what you can do with it and stuff like that. So don't worry too much for now. If you wanna go and install it, just go and install it. You'll, you'll find it's really easy. Okay, so there's all the commands in my text file. All right, so that's that. Now let's connect up a dev org, a developer org. All right, so how do I do that? SFDX force. Now I've forgotten, so let's just do minus H, right. Okay, so it's probably off. I wanna authenticate. Okay, I want to authenticate and I think it is, I've forgotten, so let's just have a look. There you go. So I did that minus H again. I haven't really forgotten, but you know, I'm just showing you that sometimes your mind goes a little bit blank and you forget the commands. Okay, so I think I've got everything there. I want to authorize an org using the web flow. What are the parameters for this? I'm just going to hit minus H and I can see here's the flow. All right, now I'm not going to worry too much about this apart from this one command, minus A. I want to set an alias. Now, this is my dev or developer dev org, so I'm just going to call it dev org. And I'm going to hit enter. All right, so that's opened up Salesforce and it's ready to be logged in. So I'm just going to log in to my developer org. All right. Mike Girl at Lightning. Password one, two, three, four. It's not really, but gives you the right idea. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed that, but very quickly across the top it flashed. That org's authenticated. So just switch back to the terminal window and it says you may now close the browser. So let's just go ahead and close that. There's a reason I'm doing that. All right. So I've connected up that org, but I've forgotten what orgs I've connected. So SFDX force org. Now I've forgotten the options, so I'm just going to go minus H. Oh, it's list. All right, so let's just put list in here. All right, and it displays a nice, pretty list for me. Dev org, might go lightning, da da da, connected. So that's my first org. Now let's, before we start messing around and opening them, let's just connect up another org. All right, so I'm gonna go back a command to H and I'm gonna call out the minus R flag, right? So if I wanna connect this to a sandbox, I'm going to do minus R. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna do minus A for alias, and I'm gonna call this sandbox, all right? Boo, okay, opens up the login screen again. Okay, this time it's test.salesforce.com. Now, if you've got a custom domain, you could have put the custom domain there. All right, sorry, my domain. So I'm now gonna log in here Let's go mikegirlcloudava.com, sorry, cloudava2.com. Oh, it's a sandbox, so we need dev net 
Oop, I was going to tell you my password then. I'll stop. Okay, it's going to present me with this screen. I'm just going to say yes. The previous sandbox, sorry, the previous devil didn't present that screen because I'd already connected it as part of testing. So now I have my sandbox connected. So let me just log out of here. Let's close down some of these. Let's close this down. There's a wonderful video from Peter. We'll leave that there. Okay, let's come back to here. So I'm back in my terminal session. So let's go to our org list now. Let's have a look. So we've now got two orgs in our org list. So how do we jump into those orgs from the command line? Remember I was saying that sometimes it's easier just to run a couple of commands, especially if you've run the command before and have your org just open up. You know, let's show you how you do that. So sfdx space force org space open minus u. Okay, actually, let's just go minus h. Right, okay. The examples that it gives you here is you could enter your username, you could enter your alias, that's where you see my test org. All right, so I'm just gonna open, I'm gonna say minus u and I'm gonna say dev org. If I do minus u dev org, I'm in my developer org. All right, so I can actually leave that there. I'm gonna hit the up arrow. Now I wanna go into my sandbox org. Now I'm in my sandbox org. See, that is extremely fast login. You know, one password, I'd have to put my thumbprint, search for my org, pop the URL. So if I'm already down here, I'm just literally doing this. Very useful. And the other cool thing, let's just show you this. So which browser session is it gonna pop open in? So I've just opened a guest one here. So now if I do this, all right, bang, I'm in there. Let's go back there. So what I mean, that is just very good. And the other little cool thing, if ever you need to go in incognito, incognito. All right. Screen's getting a little bit busy. Let's just clear this down. So let's go back to our list. Now, I'm extremely lazy. Having to type sandbox is just too long for me. So let's have a look at changing the alias. All right, so let's go sfdx force alias. All right, I've forgotten the command, so I'm going to go minus h and there isn't one. Uh, I think if I go set, hmm, there isn't one. That's because I've spelt alias wrong. There you go, fat fingers. Right, so let's have a look at the list of aliases. All right, and let's have a look at the set. Right, so I want to set, all right, I want to set, do, 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 which one do I want to do? I want to do, I want to set D equals this. Let's have a look at the list of aliases. All right. Why did I do that? Because I'm just going to go back through the commands. I'm incredibly lazy and I don't even want to type devorg. Okay. So as you can see here, you can change, you can change your aliases. Very, very simple. So what else can we do? Let's have a look at last thing then. So you're probably thinking, okay, I've got to type all these commands. Um, all right. It's kind of, they kind of auto 
complete and in another part I'll show you a way of doing proper autocomplete but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, let's just create a bash profile all right create bash profile very easy I'm just going to show you how to do this so let's go cd to there it says let's go touch touch it just means create an empty one all right so then you can see that it's hidden but if i do code uh, bash profile opens it up on here okay so that opens it up in vs code for easy editing so we've got alias then my alias so i just want to get the dx list so i'm going to go dxl equals sfdx force uh, force org list so we go save that all right so my alias that i'm going to type to run this dx command is dxl so let's just jump back into here now in order for that to work i have to reload uh, reload the bash profile so source and then this then dxl s sorry dxl brings it up okay so if i want to open org so let's just do a little bit more so if i come in here i can keep adding aliases so let's say I want to open dx dev dxd. What do I want to do? I want to do sf dx force org open minus u d. So we go. Okay, so dxd dxd. If I do that, command's not found. That's because I need to run this command. He says that's because I've got to run this one. I think it's source forward slash bash Let's try again DXD. Oh well. That's because there's a pilot error. Bingo. There you go. If we didn't have those little pilot errors, it wouldn't be real. All right, so there you go. So that's the first part. Stay tuned for the next part where we're gonna start looking at the data, the group of commands that allow us to manipulate and do apexy things and also the data things. But for this part, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time.